In this lesson, we're going to learn about the y-intercept as well as the maximum and minimum outputs of a function. Let's begin by talking about the y-intercept. First, a couple of important notes about the y-intercept. First of all, the y-intercept is where the graph passes through the y-axis. Remember on the coordinate plane that the y-axis is the vertical or up and down axis. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses through that axis. Another important note is that when we write the coordinates of the y-intercept, the x value of the coordinate is always zero. In other words, when you write the point, you will have zero, comma, and then the y-intercept. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have the graph of a function, and here we have the y-axis. Notice where that function passes through the y-axis. It's at this point right here. That point is known as the y-intercept. The coordinates of that point are 0, negative 1. Notice that the x value is 0. That's always true for the y-intercept. Now let's talk about the maximum and minimum of a function. When we refer to maximum and minimum, we're talking about outputs. Maximum is the largest output that the function produces, and minimum refers to the smallest output that the function produces. Remember, outputs are y values, so when we write the maximum or minimum, in these cases we are writing y values. When you're thinking about the maximum and you look at the graph, ask yourself how high does the graph go? That value will be the maximum. When talking about the minimum, ask yourself how low does the graph go? That value will be the minimum. Let's take a look at an example. We want to state the maximum and minimum outputs of the function. And here's the graph of the function. For the maximum, we look for the highest point on the graph. We look at the y value at that point. The y value is 5, so the maximum output is 5. For the minimum, we look at the lowest point on the graph. At that y value, we have negative 4, so the minimum output is negative 4. This function has a maximum output of 5 and a minimum output of negative 4. Now, let's take a look at some examples so that we can become more comfortable and familiar at working with the y-intercept and identifying the maximum and minimum. In exercise 1, we have the graph of a function. Part A, we're asked to state the coordinates of the y-intercept. To do that, we look along the y-axis. We identify the point where the graph passes through the y-axis. It's at the point 0, negative 3. And so, we write the point 0, comma, negative 3. Sometimes folks will ask why I write the word point in front of those coordinates. It's true that it's not necessary to write that. However, I write it for the sake of clarity. 0, comma, negative 3, written in parentheses, could be interval notation for an inequality, or it could be a point on the coordinate plane. I like to word, write the word point to make it very clear what I mean. Part B and C ask us to identify the maximum and then the minimum output of the function. For maximum and minimum, I'm looking for the highest and the lowest outputs. For maximum, I'm looking for that highest value of y. I see that that high y value is 6, so the maximum output is 6. For the minimum, I'm looking for the low y value. That lowest y value is negative 4, so I can say that the minimum output is negative 4. Exercise 2 is for you to try. Here's the graph of a function. Can you state the coordinates of the y-intercept, the maximum, and the minimum outputs? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. Part A, state the coordinates of the y-intercept. We're looking to see where the graph passes through the y-axis. It does at this point right here. That's the point 0, 3. B, state the maximum output of the function. Maximum and minimum, we're looking for the highest and the lowest points. The highest y value is positive 4, so the maximum output is 4. The minimum refers to the lowest y value, the lowest part of the function. 
That y value is negative 5, so the minimum output is negative 5. Now let's take a look at a function that has something a little bit different. This time, in exercise 3, our function will have arrows on the ends of the graph, and this does affect things a little bit. Let's start with the y-intercept. State the coordinates of the y-intercept. Once again, we're looking for that point where the graph passes through the y-axis. It's at this point right here, which is the point 0, negative 4. Now state the maximum and the minimum output. It's very easy to locate the lowest part of the function, but notice the top of the function has arrows. It goes up forever. Is there a maximum height that the function reaches, or does it go up endlessly? Well, when we have arrows going up, the graph goes up endlessly. So we say there is no maximum output. Please be very careful. Here's a word of caution. Do not write infinity for the maximum output. Yes, the graph does go up toward infinity, which tells us the graph goes in the positive direction upward. The y values get larger and larger as we go in the positive direction. However, infinity is simply a direction. It is not an output so it would be improper to write that the output was infinity. The correct thing to say is that there is no maximum output. Part C. What is the minimum output? Look at the bottom of the graph, the lowest point. What is the y value there? The y value is negative 5, so the minimum output is negative 5. Exercise 4 is for you to try. Can you identify the coordinates of the y-intercept as well as the maximum and minimum? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. We first identify the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the graph passes through the y-axis. In this case, it's at the point 0, 1. How about the maximum output? Well, we have an arrow going upward, which means the graph goes up forever. There is no maximum output. Remember to be careful. Do not write infinity as your output. Infinity is simply a direction, not an output. It isn't a number. How about the minimum of the function? How low does the function go? Well, the function goes downward forever. The function goes toward negative infinity, which means we have no minimum output. Again, be careful. Do not write negative infinity. Negative infinity simply means that the graph continues in the downward direction but it is not an output. The last exercise is for you to try. Let's see how good you are at identifying the coordinates of the y-intercept, the maximum, and the minimum of the function. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. The first question asks us about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is at the point 0, 0. The second question asks us about the maximum. How high does the function go? The maximum height is 4, so the maximum output is 4. The third question asks us about the minimum output. We have arrows on the ends that are going downward forever, toward negative infinity. Therefore, there is no minimum output. Now you know everything you need to know in order to work with the y-intercept, the maximum, and the minimum of a function. Remember, you can learn more about functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.